Good to see you all today. Listen, let's get into the word of God. Let's give the word of God today. We certainly thank God for you that are watching us, that are sharing with us, that have been faithful. Amen. We listen. I want to give God praise. I, I want y'all to give him a shout out in the room so they can hear it even over the live. Here's what we're going to pray, praise God for. We thank God for the people, the amen, that still value the live experience and don't wait for the playback. Come on, give God praise for them that are going through the experience with us. Hallelujah. They have not yet said, come on, we'll just catch it tomorrow. I'll just catch it tonight. Come on, amen. But you have fixed yourself on 11 o'clock a.m. on Sundays and on 7 o'clock p.m. on Wednesdays and you are ready, amen, to worship with us live. I want to pause and just say thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your faithfulness. We certainly thank God, amen, for you being in the house. All right. Um, um, I, I wasn't quite because we didn't have Wednesday. I, I, I kind of wasn't, amen, over uh, redo. So we're going to mess redo into a new word today. Amen and hallelujah. But we're going to um, introduce another word, amen, as we continue to lean, amen, and wait on God to give us the redo. Amen. Amen. Because, because what I learned, I have to insert this. Amen. That 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 the blind man's listen. I, I've been I've been thinking about that all week. We got another text for you today, but I've been thinking about that all week. How, Amen. The process of him regaining his sight and his focus. Come on, somebody. There had to be some scary stuff for him to even get to the place of manifestation. I, you you got to understand his process. I don't want this to get missed because. Sometimes God is going to ask for your hand when you can't see. Uh, and that thing stuck with me that, that he had to have the courage. Hear me. Amen. He trusts the friends who brought him to Jesus. But he had to have enough faith in somebody that he has never seen or haven't experienced to not only let him lead him out of the city, but lead him out of his comfort zone. Because he came with some friends that he trusted because he couldn't see. But God, Jesus led him away from those who was providing vision for him. And I'm telling you sometimes before he ever works on your miracle, it's going to have a, 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 it's going to be a season of faith where you're going to have to still walk with him blind. And we give God praise for it. I hope you, I want you to get that because some of you right now are looking for things to make sense before you keep going. I feel that in my spirit, that you're considering something else because what you're doing ain't feeling like it's making sense. But I'm telling you, you got to remember what he said and you got to allow him to lead you while you're still blind. Because after a while, you're going to get sight and you're going to get focus. All right, I'm going to leave that along and I'm going to move home. I'm going I'm, I'm to leave that along and I'm going to move home. Hallelujah. But I feel that in my spirit. You need to go rewatch that if you haven't already. You need to go rewatch that. All right, let's get into the word of God today. Listen, this is a text that I know, amen, and you ain't got to talk about me. I'm going to talk about myself. I don't know why God, Brother Jamal, cannot let me shake. I know I've preached from Luke 5 about three times in the last year and a half. I, I know I have, and he keeps pulling me back to the scripture because he keeps, amen, showing me something different that I've never seen before. And I love it about God. He, amen. You can read a scripture over and over again, but if your mind is open to what he's saying, he's going to show you something different every single time. And so we're going back there today as I introduce a new word. Amen. Luke 5. Amen. It's Luke 5. And I'm reading from the New King James Version today. Luke 5. We're talking about the net breaking blessing. We're talking about he must got me there because he about to give us one. Amen. That's, that's probably why he won't let it shake because it's one about to come into the house. I need you to just receive it for your own self. I need you to get stingy for 10 seconds and say, I'm about to receive my net breaking blessing. If it ain't for nobody else in the room. Hallelujah. God is about to give me something that's going all right. Uh, amen. Somebody maybe online got that and received that. But I'm talking to 10 of you that's just been getting enough to get by. But I'm getting ready for a season that's going to stretch my company. Oh, God. That's why he's stretching you because he's preparing to pour something bigger in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I've just made up in my mind. I'm going to grow where I need to grow, where I can receive what I need to receive. 
because there's a neck breaking blessing about to hit my life. My God, I feel that in the spirit. I feel that in the spirit. I feel that in the spirit. Hallelujah. I'm talking to 10 of you. Amen. People are jealous of you now. Hallelujah. I need you to just say to yourself, you ain't even seen nothing yet. If you jealous right now, he's just beginning with me. What you gonna do when he really gives me my breakthrough? What about? Hallelujah. You think I got something now? God, I wish I had. I'm still struggling. I know it looks like I got it. I'm still trying to make ends meet. And you jealous right now? What you gonna do when he really pours? When he really opens up the windows of heaven. God, I wish I had. Woo. I need 10 of you that are confident enough in God to say it. To look at somebody while we're social distant and say, you better get used to me being blessed. I'm telling you. Well, that by Shaka. Come on, I ain't got no plans to go backwards. You better get used to me being blessed. You better be used to me walking in my healing. You better got used to me having a flow, never having to penny pinch, but having more than enough. Just put your hand on your hip and say, get used to it. I'm talking to 10 of you. God says he's pleased with your stewardship and he's going to make money flow through your hand because he know it won't get stuck with you. Amen. I need you to lift those blessed hands up and say, God, you can use them. You, you can use them. You can use them. You can use them to flow. Woo. You better get used to it. Get used to it. Hallelujah. Because you took notes last week, you understand focus is not for your rear view. Hallelujah. God ain't giving you revelation for you to look behind you, but God is about to do something because of what's before you. Hallelujah. Let's get into this scripture. Let's get into this word. I just felt that in my spirit for somebody. Let's get into this word. Luke 5, Luke 5 and 1. So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Jacinarit and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. But nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they both began to sink. My word for the day I'm going to release. And then I'm going to give you my topic for my message. But my word for this week is simply this, rejuvenate. I just look at somebody and say, it's time for me to be rejuvenated. Hallelujah. I need some rejuvenation. That may not be for you, but I need you to pray for your neighbor and say, I speak rejuvenation on your life. Hallelujah, Jesus. I pray that God will rejuvenate you. Hallelujah. And my topic, amen, or my subtopic is this. It's not breaking you. It's making you. Hallelujah. I don't care what you're going through. You got to understand it's not breaking you. It's making you. Give God praise in the house of God today. Give God praise in the house of God. Let's get into this. I want to deal with this and I want to teach this today. The word rejuvenate. The word rejuvenate. Hey Amen. I know it sounds like a fancy word, but it's simple in terms of its definition. It simply means to give new energy to or to give new vigor to. 
It means to restore. I love this definition. A re- to restore a youthful appearance to. Um, the word rejuvenate is used oftentimes as relates uh, to our skin or as it relates to our health, trying to get us back, amen, to a youthful state. But the word doesn't mean uh, in its definition uh, specifically um, our health, but we use the word as it pertains to our health because it speaks of a man going back or getting our youth or a man rolling back the years of our appearance. But, But the idea of rejuvenation can be applied to different areas of your life. And there's some of us, our dream, our vision, um, the thing that God has put in our heart, amen, or even the thing that we are waiting and anticipating God to do, we simply have lost the usefulness of it. Don't you know you can have a youthfulness to your excitement? You remember what it felt like when you started the first time? You remember what it felt like, amen, when God gave you the vision and how it was going to work and he showed you you functioning in it and prospering through it and you remember how it felt, amen, when you first got the loan or you first signed for the building or you first got the boo or you first got the job or you got accepted into the university that you were wanting to do or you made the team that you were trying out for I don't care what it is there was a youthfulness about your exuberation amen there was a youthfulness there was a there was a a a youngness there was a vibrancy to it there was an excitement that came with pursuing something that you was excited about and felt that God was going to bless amen and I'm telling you sometimes we can live in such a way, amen, where our, amen, our energy will be zapped, amen, by the same thing that rejuvenated us once. I'm telling you right now that, amen, if you're going to live this life successfully, uh, Elder Hunt, if we are going to live in a way where we are consistent as it relates to our mannerisms, uh, our disposition, still knowing God will, he can, and he is, even though we face different stuff, we have to learn how to have the ability to rejuvenate ourselves. Amen. Rejuvenation is vital as we navigate this journey called life. There's sometimes that you can't wait for people. Come here, David, and help me preach. You can't wait for people to give you the right word. You can't wait for somebody to call you at the right time. You, you can't wait sometimes. You may be in a situation where nobody knows what you're going through. You can either sit there and rot, or you can pick your own self up, anoint your own head, and encourage yourself in the Lord if do I have anybody and maybe just two people that have ever had to look in the mirror and tell your own self you're worth it you had to tell your own self you are enough you had to tell your own self you got what it takes to be successful you had to tell your own self God will not let you die here you had to speak life not into your neighbor but you had to look in the mirror and talk to the person that was looking back at you and tell them you will live and not die. Who am I preaching to? Have you ever been by yourself but in a place where rejuvenation had to be conjured up by yourself with the help of your Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Sometimes amen life will hit us amen and knock us down but it's up to us amen to decide if we're going to stay down or if we we're going to find energy from somewhere to get back up. I'm talking to 10 of you who have just decided I'm going to get back up. And the more I live, Sister Lisa, the more I believe and the more I understand, Brother Mike, the more I understand that life 
is truly not about the knockdowns. The more I live, and I've experienced a lot of them, and a lot of y'all gonna experience a lot of them. Everything ain't gonna work. Everybody ain't gonna treat you justly. Everybody is not going to be right concerning you. Things don't look like they may be working your way. The cards might be stacked against you. But what I've learned the longer I live is that life is really not about the knockdowns, but it is about the ability to get back up. Amen. Not just, hear me, not just getting up to stand up, Sister Victoria. Amen. Sister Toya, listen, not just getting back up to stand up, but getting up and continuing to pursue. Hallelujah. We've got to learn how to not only get back up, but pursue again. And a lot of you, yeah, I'm back up on my feet. But God has not designed you to just stay on your feet. But you got to move from where you are. Hallelujah. And I believe God is going to you know, revive us or rejuvenate us so that we can get back going. To give us a new energy. To do what used to give us life. Hallelujah. What do you do when the assignment it's still on you, but it ain't giving you life no more. Huh? Come on, somebody. Well, what do you do when you don't like it, but you still assigned to it? What do you do when it feels like it's not profiting you anything? You don't see any fruits of it, but God has not released you from it yet. I'm talking to 10 of you that, amen, that may feel like you're not getting anything out of it, but God has you in it. I'm telling you the reason why we don't get benefits from things because we don't bring energy to it. And if you don't bring energy to it, you're not going to get energy from it. Hallelujah. Many of you have bad days because you woke up saying, I don't like this day. Hallelujah. You wonder why it ain't going right? Come on, somebody. Because when you woke up in the morning, you say, I wish I was in my bed. I ain't feeling the job. I ain't feeling the co-workers. They better not say nothing to me. They better be glad I'm there. And then you praying, God, why my day going so bad? You ain't bring the right energy to it. So how in the world are you going to get the right energy Oh, come on. I wish I had two people that can say amen, amen, hallelujah. And we got to understand that God, amen, wants us not focusing on the knockdowns. Too many of us are not moving forward because of the knockdowns. But God said in the midst of the knockdowns, I'm always going to give you the ability to get back up. Sometimes while in this thing called process, we just don't feel it anymore. How many of you have been in a process, you might be in one right now, and you just simply don't feel it? I, can I just, I'm going to teach from, on myself from the, my own pulpit. There's sometimes I just ain't feeling, amen, doing what I'm doing right now. Sometimes I wake up, amen. Sometimes I'm in my office. Sometimes I'm looking next week and saying, God, amen, what, 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 what do you want me to say? I'm, I'm, I'm blank and I have to, amen, really focus in because, amen, somebody has said something or somebody has done something or, amen, I'm not feeling my best or somebody has misunderstood my heart and sometimes it gets me to a place where I'm just not feeling it. It ain't worth it. Am I by myself or that sometimes you just ain't simply feeling it? You don't have the energy for it. You don't even have the strength for it. Come on somebody. You've lost the excitement about it. Amen God. Amen. You've got discouraged with it. Amen. Listen, I'm talking to the ten of you. You are just simply over it. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you right now even though you may feel that in your mind if God still has something that you need to get done in the season that you think you over you got to find some energy rejuvenate yourself and get back to doing what God has called you to do with the vigor amen that you had the first time and I'm talking to 10 of you right now it's not enough to go through the motion it's time for you to provide some energy to it Listen, but we understand, amen, many of you are with me, we understand that if anything is going to work, you have to give energy to it. Have you ever tried to see some, have you seen somebody, amen, you paid, Jay, they, you, you paid uh, your money to hear them sing and they ain't giving no energy. 
You paid your money to see a play, and ain't nobody doing nothing with no energy. Or you watching a basketball game, and everybody walking around, and ain't nobody, amen, bringing energy to it. If there is no vitality or there's no energy, you cannot, amen, expect God to give you tremendous results when you have lackluster energy in it. Uh, you heard me say this before I've taught it what have you thrown yourself at because a lot of times we give stuff half of us but we want the whole reward uh, come on somebody just because you thought about it it ain't over come on amen amen just because you have a mind to do it don't mean God's gonna honor it come on somebody just because you had the thought to, to get it done sometimes he's looking at your effort and saying you don't really want it like you say you want it because I don't see no energy in it Okay, let me just get off of you. Three of you felt that when it got quiet in here, but that's all right. Thank you for those two who pushed the amens through. Amen to get me on to my next point. Hallelujah. I believe that we got to restore energy. Restore the youthful excitement to things. And this is where we find, he said, Pastor, how, how does this relate to our text? Because I, I want to I point out some things before we get to the revelation, amen, that prompted me to teach this again. Um, but I got to understand, we got to paint a picture of what Peter or Simon is seeing here in the text. We find Simon in the text. And let me just give you some bullet points of what's going on with Simon. Number one, amen, he is out of the boat and he's washing his nets. He's out of the boat. He had been fishing all night with his friends, and he's, he's finished, and amen, they came up empty, and so he's washing his nets. He's dealing, hear me, if you allow me to just, amen, paint a picture emotionally, he's dealing with the disappointment, I believe, and the frustrations of an unsuccessful fishing trip. He, he's, he's at the pier. He's saying, man, amen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this for a living, but tonight I didn't get any success. And he's dealing with the frustrations and he's dealing with the disappointment of the trip. And listen, amen, can, I, God spoke something to me that I believe some of us need to understand. Here's where Peter was. The need was great, but the results were minimal. Uh, that's going to that's gonna locate five of y'all. Uh, what do you do when your relationship with God is such where he should, amen, have the results for me as in, based on the need that is uh, uh, in front of him? In other words, sometimes we get frustrated because we say to ourselves, because we ain't going to say it out loud, but we say to ourselves, God, you see the need. <laughs> Why, why, why is the results minimal when I'm where I need to be but, and the need is great, but the result don't match the need? Jesus comes and, and, and Jesus sits. Let me just paint this picture. Jesus sits in Simon's boat as they were washing their nets on the shore. And Jesus comes behind them and he sits in Simon's boat because the people had started to gather and he needed a pulpit to preach from. Jesus says, Peter, come on, get your nets and get back in the boat and, 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 and push out a little bit so I can teach. And so here's what we find. And a lot of times we're going to deal with it today and we don't deal with this much, but a lot of us skip, amen, the very, a uh, very important piece in the middle of this miracle. Everybody teaches about the beginning when he's washing his nets and feeling discouraged. And we teach about the end when he's getting net breaking blessings. But in the middle of that, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm going to get to it later. In the middle of that, Jesus says, in the middle of your need and your blessing is always ministry. God, I'm trying to help y'all. See, see y'all trying to skip to what I need, to what I want, and what you're going to give me, but you don't want to stay there until ministry's over. Uh, okay, let's get, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get in that in a minute. Uh, my first point is this. Uh, God has to deal with you first. God has to deal with me first. And, and listen to this. Uh, we are quick to pray for God to fix our situation. But when was the last time you prayed, God, fix me first? 
Uh, we, we, we love to pray, God, amen, get them out of my way and move this for me. And it's their fault why I ain't got it. And God, I need a blessing. And God, I need a raise. But we never give an evaluation and say, God, what is it in me that needs fixing? Because we don't recognize that a better you will bring about a better result. You praying for a raise, but you need to be praying for you to do the job you've been called to do. God, give me patience with people so I won't have this attitude on the job so that they can give me the raise that I'm praying for. Who, who am I talking to? Amen. You want them to put you over 10 people, but you just got one person who reports to you and y'all fight every single day. Why would would God promote you when you have not yet won the battles where you've been placed? And I think a lot of times, amen, promotion will come naturally if we just get delivered from the things that's keeping us stuck where we are right now. God, I wish I had some help. Make that your prayer in this last week of consecration. Amen. Amen. A situation, I promise you, God has still got it under control and it will work out on his own. But for seven days, just pray, God, fix me. Fix my response. Fix the way I move. Let me see. Let people see God in me even though I don't see God in them. Instead of me praying for them, let me pray that I'll never act like them. Let me pray if that happens to me that I learn how to carry a storm on my shoulders and still got a praise in my mouth. This is my prayer for you that you'll pray to God fix you this week. God's got to deal with us first. He's got to deal with me first. I learned this lesson sometimes if I just learned how to deal with myself and how to respond better, then the whole situation will go better. And here it is. God had to deal with Simon before he ever addressed his situation. Before he ever talked about his fish, so, uh, Minister Rita, he had to deal with Simon being disgusted, washing his nets out of the boat. And listen, and I'm telling you right now, Simon had to rejuvenate himself. He had to bring himself to simply try this again. Amen. Y'all can't move over that too quickly because y'all know how it is to try to do something again when you just failed at it. It's not the easiest thing to go back to a place where you just came from. Jesus knew that there was blessing in Simon's future. He knew what he was going to give him if he just got back on the boat. Y'all going to listen to me? Hallelujah. Jesus knew that there was a blessing in his future. He didn't give it away. He just wanted him to be obedient. He just wanted him to get himself together. Amen. Wash off the failure that he just experienced get over his emotions get over his self and get back in the boat that'll preach all by itself hallelujah he knew what he had for him but he had to convince him to step back into what he had just given up on and that's what some of us right now God's trying to convince us Amen. It's worth another chance. He's trying to convince us it's worth you doing it again. It's worth you not giving up on them. It's worth you fighting for relationships. It's worth you fighting for businesses. It's worth you fighting for ideas. It's worth you still con confessing your healing even though you feel sick. It's worth you still moving. Amen. It's worth you still fighting for your deliverance and having the same confession that I'm not going to struggle with this all my life. I ain't going to struggle with this every day even though it's not gone yet some of y'all need to know that Jesus understands that it is tough for us to move but he still expects for us to move because your blessing is not where you are your blessing is in your response are y'all listening to me he had to convince Simon to step back into what he had just stepped out of he had to convince him to step back into the water. He had to convince him to step back into the boat. He had to convince him to step back into the routine. And here's the piece that I, I have given to you before, but I, but I have to still say it right here because what we don't recognize is that sometimes our failures and frustrations of past experiences will cause us not to notice the potential of our future. 
Let me say that again. Sometimes your past failures, your past frustrations, your past experiences of how it used to work will cause you not to even notice the potential of your future. To, 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 you won't even notice that God is in it this time. Sometimes you're so used to the idea of how it always works that you don't even figure out at first that it will be different because my relationship with Christ is different. Because this time Jesus is in the boat. This time the living water is in the water. Uh, this time Jesus is in the boat. You've got to understand that you can have Jesus in your heart, but he not be yet in your situation. God, you got to take the Jesus that you received and apply him to your situation. When was the last time you believing in a God that you say you serve? Jesus can't jump into your situation until you put him in it. How do I put him in it? By believing his word more than I believe in myself. By believing his word more than I trust my surroundings. By believing in his word, we put him in our life. Who is Jesus? The word. The word. Hallelujah. So when I put Jesus in my boat, I put the word in my situation. And I'm telling you, maybe the reason why you ain't seen it work yet, because you got what you think about it, but you ain't put what he said about it in your boat. Oh, I wish somebody would help me. Hallelujah. Teach. So, no, listen, this time, Simon moved. Hear me. This is the difference. Jesus let him fish all night for what he wanted. Let me paint this picture. Jesus let him do it his way to get his result in a way that he thought he could do it. Y'all know the, the backdrop. Peter's a fisherman. Simon's a fisherman. He knows fish. He went to do his livelihood. But he's now a disciple of Christ, still trying to get a catch outside of Jesus being in the boat. And, and so Jesus lets him try to do it on his own, waits for him to come and wash his net. And then Jesus steps in the boat and says, I'm going to show you the proper sequence to get what you wanted the first time. The, 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 uh, the, the blessing was in uh, your path. The blessing was for you. You just did it out of sequence. Uh, Y'all going to walk with me here? Uh, so this time, he put Simon in proper sequence so that he can experience kingdom blessings. What was the proper sequence? Number one, Jesus gets into the situation. In other words, if you're going to do this thing the kingdom way, you can't start nothing until Jesus is into the situation. Hallelujah. A lot of y'all been praying for things. I mean, I've been strategizing, but you ain't asked Jesus what he thought about it yet. Some of y'all been having, this is a great idea. Yeah, but is it a God idea? Yeah, you said, yeah, this going to blow up. Who said it's going to blow up? Hallelujah. Yeah, we're going to open a chain and take this around the country. Is that what you want? Oh, is that what Jesus wants? I'm telling you right now, sometimes we ain't put it in proper sequence and we're mad because things don't work and we have not yet ran it up the chain to see if it even is the will of God. Just because it worked for Lucy down the street don't mean God has called it to your life. And you've got to understand the proper sequence to getting an overflow blessing. It is not what comes natural to you, but it's understanding what it is Jesus is in because just because I'm good at it don't mean he's in it for me and I'm not going to get kingdom results not because I ain't good enough to get it but because he didn't design me to have it Oh, my. Y all, y all. and sometimes we got to lay down what we want and get in line with what he's called us to have he put them back in sequence he says let me get in the boat first now, when I get in the boat, you get in the boat with me. Never saw this before. Before we ever deal with your fishing, you're going to have to serve while I'm preaching. <sighs> Peter had to submit to serving and doing God's work first. 
He says, lunch out, I got to preach to these people. I'm going to use your boat. I know you're worried about fish, and I know you're worried about this, your job working, and I know you're worried about having more than enough, and I know you're mad because your nets is empty and you're washing them out because it didn't work. But if you'll just pause and serve in ministry for a little bit, we'll get back to what you want. And not only will we get back to it, but I'll give you the cash that you never thought you could get on your own because you submitted to ministry first. Uh, Y'all didn't get the sequence. And see, some of us are too busy going at the things we want without putting the ministry part in the middle. And Jesus says, if you will submit to me, I'll turn around and give you what you wanted from the beginning. You just got to do it in my order. Ah. So he has to drive him around. He has to be the armor bearer. He's got to lay his anchors in the water and make sure Jesus don't float away. Make sure he's turned right because the fish probably, I mean, the boat probably was wanting to shake and move. And Jesus trying to teach. And he's saying, Peter, hold this thing steady. steady, They got to get this out of me. And he has to serve still broke, still barren, still thinking about what he lost or didn't get. And saying, I thought he was coming out here to help me. But he got me out here helping him. And why would he even tell me to bring my nets if we ain't going to do nothing but preach? We don't need nets for preaching. So, so, so like some of us might have been, he, he might have been on that kind of pouting because you got me doing all this stuff thinking there's something in here for me. And all I'm doing is out here waiting on here. And you using my boat. You ain't giving me no rent or nothing. This is my boat. This is, this is my area. You stepping on my stuff. But all you're doing is preaching and teaching. And the Bible says after Jesus finished teaching, he turns to him and says, okay, now, is this what you want? Launch out in the deep. You was, you was in shallow water. But because you served, I'm going to promote you to deeper. <laughs> oh, y'all got me. So submission to serving and doing Jesus' work first caused him to position himself. He said, okay, now get those nets, and we're going to go do what you've been wanting to do all night. Number two, my first point is this, and I'm moving. Frustration drains Expectation. (laughs) Y'all going to talk to me. Frustration drains expectation. I need five of you who ever felt what it felt to be frustrated. It's hard for you to expect good results while feeling frustration at the same time. Sometimes God has to deal with the frustration before he can ever restore your expectation. Because what frustration does is that it will cause you to run from the very situation that you need to be expecting great things in. When I get frustrated with something, my blessing can be in that, but I don't want to deal with that because it frustrates me. And so that's why sometimes we got to learn how to deal with frustrations because the very thing that you're frustrated in may be the very thing that God has placed you to be blessed with. Verse 5 says, but Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Can I read between the lines? This statement shows a lack of confidence in what Jesus was requesting. You telling me to cast my net into the deep. I've done that all night and I ain't caught nothing. Why would you want me to waste my time again? This statement is also a lack of comprehension of the power of his word. Because why would you question God when you really understood who he was? Why would you ask questions like, God, why would you want me to do that when you know if he speaks a word, it has to come to pass because he is the word? See, some of our questions are because we have a lack of comprehension. Amen. And our, ele- our revelation is not allowing us to say yes to Jesus, even though we don't understand the assignment yet. 
And your questions are because you have not yet. Do you know who's asking of you? Do you know who's asking you to serve? Do you know who's asking you to give? Do you know who's asking you to sacrifice? Do you know who's asking you to lay something down or give something away or move to something else? Whatever Jesus is asking you, you've got to understand he would not ask you if, unless he has something greater for you. There's some people that say, can I borrow $20? You'd be like, I don't know, because you don't never have no money. But when you have know somebody is wealthy, and they say, I left my wallet at home. I need, I need get, man, can you got $100 on you? Let me borrow. As soon as I give it to you, you'd be like, yeah, okay. I get because I know you're probably going to give it back. Why? Because you have a revelation of not only their gratitude, but, as, but uh, a revelation of their means. So when we question God, what we're really saying is I don't quite understand how much you really have. When we say if you can, you're really questioning, are you really the creator of everything? When you're praying about somebody who's trying to eat you up, you're really saying to God, are you really the one who created the blacksmith who fans the flames? We got to understand that when we question God, what we're saying is, I'm not quite sure of your ability and your heart. I don't know if you love me enough to do it for me. Some of y'all might be over the fact that he can. You just ain't quite sold on if he loves you enough to do it for you. <laughs> So, 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 so we, in a way, insult him and say, I can give my own son for you, but then you'll question whether I love you. Okay, let me move on because I'm seeing faces turned. We got, but, but, but here's the thing. We got to learn to trust them when we can't see it and we can't feel it and we don't know it, but we know him. And if I know him, I don't know what he's doing, but I know he's up to something because I know him. Yeah, Y'all listening. Uh, so, so frustration drains expectation. Uh, it drains expectation. So this statement, he adds, Master, we've told all night and caught nothing. This statement showed not only a lack of comprehension to the word of the power of the word of God, but a lack of energy, hear me, or excitement around doing it again. Let me locate some of you right here. You know you've heard about these miracles and blessings and turnarounds and my shit about to come in. You grew up in it. You heard it all your life. You just lost energy for it because you ain't seen one for you yet. You've been hearing the testimonies of how people gave they hunted and they seen, amen, double fold and triple fold return. And you've seen how people, God bless them, I gave that 121 and by next week I got double. Mo said she got so blessed in her business she need to give another 121. Some of y'all can get a revelation of what he's doing, but there's somebody that said, I gave mine and I ain't seen nothing yet. And so you just over the promise of God's coming when he's been coming for the last five years and you ain't seen nothing yeah, can I, can I just help you? You got to rejuvenate yourself to believe and trust in it. Here it is last week, even though your process is different. Because what we learned last week is if he's got to touch you once or if he got to touch you twice or if he's got to touch you five times, the same Jesus is doing the touching. Just, just because you got it on the first touch and it took me five years to get it, it didn't make my miracle less powerful because the same powerful Jesus did it. So, so, so we got to get the excitement and the energy back in him doing it again. And sometimes when it ain't worked for a couple times, you lose the excitement to say if it's going to work this time. So you got to rejuvenate the energy to trust him the way you trusted him the first time. Are y'all listening to this teaching? Because this thing is in my spirit for somebody. Frustration drains expectation. This statement, then, then Simon, I'm sorry, makes this critical statement. Nine minutes. He makes this critical statement. He says, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. This statement, you cannot drive past this statement going 85 miles an hour because this statement is real critical to things turning for him. 
Even though he felt what he felt, even though he had the doubts that he had, he had a nevertheless in his spirit. The statement spoke to Simon's, hear me, saints of God. It spoke to his ability to move past what he felt and obey what Jesus commanded. That's where 30 of us are stuck in right now. We hear what Jesus commanded, but we can't move past how we feel about it. You heard God say, forgive them, but you can't get past what they did. You heard God say it, sow it, but you can't get past what it's going to feel to not have it. You heard the word. The problem is how you feel is stronger than what he said. Many of you, you don't need another word. You just need the strength to get past your emotion. You got plenty of promises over your life, but you don't understand some things. So the way you feel about it, get in your way. You don't need no fresh rain of word. You just need the ability to believe what he's already spoken over your life. We got to get a nevertheless. I don't want to do it, but he's asking me to do it, so nevertheless. I don't want to go, but he's telling me to go, so nevertheless. I don't want to respond, but God is requiring me to respond, so nevertheless. I don't want to try it again, but he's saying there's a blessing and try it again, so nevertheless. I don't want to do it because the last time I did it, I didn't get the result I wanted, and I tried it for the last five times, but it didn't work, but nevertheless. And I'm telling you, if you're going to go forth in what God has in your spirit, you have got to restore your nevertheless. Because it's going to take a nevertheless to pull you to another level when God stretches you where you are right now. And if you don't have the ability to obey his word through how you feel you'll get stuck not going into the deep ah. the statement spoke to Simon's ability to move past what he felt and obey what Jesus commanded and that is why we must be rejuvenated so we can recover our nevertheless again are you here when we lose energy when we lose excitement or when we lose expectation, listen, you also lose your nevertheless. When you ain't feeling it, when you ain't expecting much, when you ain't trusting it, you ain't going to do it in spite of it. You start moving from what you see and how you feel or what have you have experienced in the past uh, and you start moving to what Jesus said when you recover your nevertheless. My third point is this, and here's where, why we chose this text again today because here's what God showed me and I got excited about it and I believe it's going to help at least five of you who are hearing me in here today. My third point is this, you may bend but you won't break. I need you to receive that over your own life. I might bend, but I won't break. I don't care what's on you. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care what's stressing you. I've come to encourage you today. You might bend, but you're not going to break. I'm right here in the text. Amen. And we're going to get out of here. I have always taught. Can I just say this from the pulpit? I have always taught this um, and envisioned when the net uh, breaking in chapter I mean, in, in verse six, uh, brother Jamal. I've always taught it, and I envision the net actually breaking. I, I've envisioning them losing some fish, amen, and them calling the boat over to grab what was coming so they won't lose no more. I might be by myself, but I envision that um, that they were losing fish. But the text says in verse six. And when they had done this, they caught a great multitude of fish, and their net was breaking. Let me just give it to you in a couple of translations before we teach it. Their net was breaking. The New Living Translation says their nets were so full of fish that they began to tear. Uh, another translation in the Message Bible says a huge haul of fish came, and it was straining the nets pass capacity. In the Amplified version, it says, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were at the point of breaking. In other words, the nets were stretching, but they did not break. 
Okay, let me just help ten of you that can get this. Big blessings, hear what God told me when I read that and said, oh, my God, they never lost the fish. It was starting to break, but Jesus had a plan in case the capacity got too much. <sighs> in other words, God stretched them, but he didn't break them. And here's what the Holy Spirit told me, and I need 10 of y'all to get it, that's really looking for something this season and really believe your 2021 is going to be better than it was before. Here's what God told me to tell you. What God wants to give you will strain and has to strain and will test your capacity, but it won't break you. Oh, God. Can I just help you? Big blessings stretch current conditions. Uh, so, so, so many of us feel like I'm overwhelmed. I can't take no much. I'm at my edge. I'm, I'm stretching. I'm about to break. What God is telling you is for this. It is not to kill you or to break you down, but it's getting you prepared for expansion. It's right in the text. They had one net on one boat, but God said I had to show you. That one net on one boat was not big enough for what I wanted to give you. And right when you was about to stretch and break what you had, I sent another boat in your direction. Huh. That means the blessing of trying to handle what God was giving them in one blessing, they rolled back into the shore on two boats about to sink. Okay, some of y'all slow in the spirit. You went out there with one, but you're coming back with two. You, 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 want, you went out there with one net because you didn't expect God to do it, even though he told you to take both nets. But because he loved you, even though you didn't trust him at first, if you'll be obedient, he'll send somebody back to get what you should have brought so you won't lose what he wants to give. What am I talking about? I'm talking about God is about to redeem the time for you. All the things you thought was going to break because you were stretched to capacity and you never went after because you thought you didn't have the capacity for it. He's going to bring you help to get what you carry in and get what you're supposed to have as well. What are you saying? Let me just break this down. Some of y'all ain't tried nothing new because you're looking at your capacity now and say, I ain't got no time for nothing else. God said the help I'm bringing in this season is going to help you bring in the big haul despite your minimal capacity. Okay. Okay. Lord, I'll get happy and, and shout around my office in my room when I get it. And I'll go back to my office and I'll give you praise because... You're stretching me for a reason right now. You're stretching me mentally. and You're stretching what I can take. And you're stretching what I go through. And you're stretching how people make me feel. And you're stretching. And I think sometimes I'm at my, lit, um, my, my wits end. And you remind me, if you can't take these 300 people, how are you going to take 3,000? So he's not stretching me to break me, but he's stretching me to let me know there's another boat coming that's going to help me handle the 3,000 that's coming. But I'm telling you, it may not be your, it may be your testimony, but whatever God is wanting to give you, amen, you're struggling to see how you're going to handle the first business. But he said, if you'll just let me stretch you, I'll bring a second business that's going to help you handle the load so you won't be stretched to capacity of where you are because the next will never break when Jesus is on the boat. I don't care how much they're being stretched. I don't care how much the capacity is at its limits. As long as you got Jesus on the boat, you've got a solution right around the corner. And I'm telling you right now, that's why you've got to renew, rejuvenate yourself to keep moving in your process because there's a net breaking blessing. And even though it's breaking, it will never break. Because right in the midst of time, right in the critical moment, God will send you something that's going to help you handle what he's placed on you because he'll never place more on you than you can bear and you need to stop saying I can't take no more and start saying God show me how to carry it.
because when you say I can't take no more you tell him to stop pouring but I'm telling you right now God is saying you can handle it and even though it's stretching your current container it's not going to break you it's not breaking you down it's bringing you forth and I'm telling you this will not break you but it will make you rejuvenate yourself and get back up get back on the boat do it again find the energy to try it find the energy to put it in proper sequence so that you can get kingdom results I need you to just lift your hands and ask God in this season to help you keep things in sequence. Here's my prayer for you today. My prayer is that you don't go after things out of sequence. That you don't get so caught up in wanting it that you do it with nobody on your boat. <laughs> See, because what we learn from this text is fish was in the water the whole time. It was they were not going to respond to something out of order. He didn't go to another piece of water to get fish. He just turned to a deeper place in the same vicinity. Because there are some things that will be attracted to you, hear me, not because of you, but because of who is with you. While Jesus was telling Simon to cast your net for the fish, the fish heard jump in the net. What are you trying to say? <laughs> Whatever you are pursuing has already been launched in your direction. And here's a lesson I want y'all to learn that's, that's trying to pursue stuff out of sequences. You think you're wasting time by doing servitude ministry first, but we learn from the text that while he was serving with Christ, the fish was still waiting to be, set, to be caught. What you think you'll miss will still be there when you get there, when you do things in sequence. Here's what I saw in the spirit. I saw a blessing on a boat and I saw a people too frustrated to even get in it again. I, I, I saw in the spirit Jesus summoning people to redo things and say this time it's going to be different last week. Do it again. This time you got a different perspective. This time things are in sequence and, and I, I'm seeing God's people so worn so frustrated, so wounded, so battered, so disappointed, so bruised that they're saying, I don't want no parts of the boat. I can't go another night and catch nothing. I can't risk another season with the results I just got. And what I want to tell you is that God will not change the process in which he has designed for you to get your blessing because you ain't feeling the process. He is not going to create a new process based on how you think. You have to rejuvenate yourself to do it his way no matter how you feel. Father, I pray for your people that you would rejuvenate us. 
Give us vigor. Give us energy. Give us focus. To get back up again. To move forward again. I, I, I pray. I pray that whatever we're feeling, whatever we've experienced, whatever has wounded us, will not be stronger than your voice. It will not be stronger than your word. It will not be stronger than your instruction. It will not be stronger than your pull. And I pray, God, that we have a nevertheless. After hearing this word today, I, I pray that you restore our nevertheless. Regardless how we feel, regardless of what happened in the past, regardless of what failed, regardless of what didn't work, at thy word, at your word, I'll, I'll forgive. At your word, I'll try it again. At your word, I'll re-engage. At your word, I'll lead from the front. At your word, I'll move in humility. At your word, I'll suppress it even though I'm still bitter. And I'll allow you to heal me from the inside out. I'm not going to allow it to keep me where I am, but I got a nevertheless in my spirit.